when you were 10 or 11, when things are going difficult, like you had difficult times, you know, there was challenges and you, do you remember like some of the conversations that you had with maybe your dad that was trying to motivate you and, you know, keep you going? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's never, never, um, easy when you have a parent as a coach for, for anything, but to me, specifically judo, he was my wrestling coach too, because I wrestled. So he was a judo coach of mine. He was a wrestling coach of mine. And I played softball and other sports and everything too, but I ended up stopping those and going just judo and wrestling and then taking out wrestling when I made a world team for judo. So, um, so it was once I stopped doing softball and stuff like that, it kind of made it so I not that there was no escape from it, but it kind of, kind of, so there was no escape from it. It was literally me and my dad would be in the car for hours and hours and hours and hours. And cause any place that I did went to for judo, I had a minimum 30 hour or 30 minute drive, um, typically. Um, so between 30 minutes and 50 minutes was my drive to judo practice. So it was the whole way our whole way back it was you need to be doing this you need to be doing that you need to be doing this you need to be doing that you need to not eat like that you need to like (laughs) entire entire ride there and back always always was something um the biggest thing was um was him telling me that it's it's okay to hit like a rough patch like everybody hits that patch where it's where it's difficult or something comes along where you get tempted to do other things or anything like that. It always comes along, but it was, I had the the luck to be able to have a parent that doesn't let me quit anything. So, So a lot of parents like in my judo club, I know that there's been kids that have quit just because they had a rough practice and they got in trouble or something for, for not doing something they weren't supposed to. And then they didn't want to, didn't want to come back or something. And, Right. Parents are like, oh, he, they just don't want to come back. They, they just don't, they just want to stick to swimming or stick to baseball or, and if anything, like the parents that allow their children to be reprimanded when they're doing something wrong, that's, that's what keeps them, keeps a kid into something. Like I had, I had basically the only times I ever wanted to quit was when I lost, right? Nobody wants to quit when they're winning. So I'd lose a tournament. I'd go to nationals and lose in the finals to someone that I had beaten many times before or something. And I would come back and be like, why, why would I, why am, if I'm working so hard, how am I losing? How am I losing to someone I beat every other time? So those were the times when I wanted to quit, but my dad knows how it is. He, he would never let me quit anything. So, so that parental commitment that you're talking about is gigantic. Cause I, you know, I think all of us that have been lifers in judo have similar stories where we had committed parents. Cause at the end of the day, judo is not an expensive sport. It can be when you get to the high level at the grassroots level, judo is very uh, affordable and it's, you know, right. it doesn't require a lot of equipment. Obviously when you start making teams and traveling things change, but having that parent that's willing to drive you 30 minutes, I've had kids that have quit practice because I, moved my location and it was an extra four miles away, which, you know, in city traffic, I guess that it, it does amount to some time. But when, when the parent says, oh, we just can't make it anymore, they've kind of taken that chance for judo to be the thing for their kids. So, and then of course, I have a, a bunch of stories of amazing parents that are totally willing to do anything possible for their kids. And as someone my age, I've seen a lot of people come and go in the sport of judo and that parental commitment is an absolute necessity if you want to see success in your kid whether it's judo or other sports it's not always going to be fun sometimes the practices seem monotonous and boring and you might even say yeah. wow we drove all the way here and you know they did randori for 30 minutes or they did this and the parents don't understand exactly what's going on but it's that kid that consistently comes to practice and is always there even on the slow practices you know the holiday practice where hardly anybody shows up that kid that's consistently there is the one that gets that extra few minutes with the coach after practice when people decide to leave early or don't stick around or the kid that shows up 15 minutes early to get a little bit of mat time. Like those things one off don't mean anything, but when you do that over the course of your childhood, it ends up to be gigantic in your development. And it takes parents like yourself, parents like your father and somebody that's willing to put the time in for their kids. So the fact that you were driving 30 minutes to every practice is huge. Now, obviously the talks in the car, that's tough. 
you know, yeah, the yeah. talks in the car are tough, you know, cause sometimes there's gotta be that line, right? How do you separate like being a coach versus being dad? So when you were driving to different clubs, I'm assuming there was really no club that was close to your house. Was your dad always on the mat with you or did he sit back on the side and kind of let things play out? Um, he, whenever I went to, so I, I trained at a club in Rhode Island for, a, for a while. Um, my dad at the beginning wasn't on the mat, but within, within two months, he, he was on the mat teaching. He was on the mat teaching. It just, right. it just had to happen. <laughs> he couldn't, he couldn't sit back, but, um, yeah, he was on the mat teaching there for probably six, seven years. Um, and then once I, uh, I ended up moving up to Pedro's in Boston for a little bit and, um, so once that happened, he kind of, I don't want to say stop coaching me. Cause he always has that like at home when he's always talking about it or whatever, there, there's always that coach coach mentality there, but he wasn't like, I wouldn't go to a tournament and have him coach me anymore. Uh, Travis or Jimmy would usually coach me. So, um, so at that, once I turned, it was like, I was 16 or 17 when that happened. So, so at that point, my dad kind of stepped back a little bit and as much as he says he hates to sit back and watch, yeah, watch, be, be a, be someone on the sidelines instead of being in the chair. But, but he, he said he knew it had to happen at some point. So, yeah, I do it now, even with my own kids. Sometimes, you know, just at local tournaments, my kids are pretty young. My, my uh, middle son, who's, you know, really into judo, he's only 11 years old, but sometimes, you know, we have different coaches at the club and I, I purposely pull myself back sometimes and say like, you know, went to the winter nationals a couple of years ago and. I actually went upstairs and just watched from the top. And it, it is hard as a dad, cause you want to be there and, you know, but at the same time, I understand the benefits of my son getting advice and getting coached by somebody that's different. You know, one of their, it's not like he didn't know the other coaches. Do you remember any change or how you felt like when you turned 16 or 17, obviously your judo is at the peak of where it's ever been. You're getting older, you're getting better. And suddenly dad's not in the coach's chair. Was that a hard adjustment for you? Um, it was, it was definitely different. Um, just coaching styles. Um, honestly, I don't want to, cause I always liked having my dad in the chair cause he was always as much as people don't like the emotional investment because it can be harder on the, on the athlete. It honestly probably saved me in some situations when there were, whether it was a bad call or something, something happened. He was always one to stand up over everybody else even if he wasn't in the chair at that time he was always screaming on the mat or right. so so um it was definitely an adjustment like coaching style wise but it was I, I i'd say because my dad trained with jimmy and trained with pretty much ever most people that were pretty decent at the time um they had some similar tactics similar styles my dad always from a young age, I, he taught me gripping. So I had that behind me and similar techniques that Jimmy always went over and everything. So, um, so the, the coaching style was a little bit different, just how they spoke on the mat, but it, it wasn't much of an adjustment judo wise or anything like that. 